This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. The trial of Brian Koberger. We uh, are still waiting to see exactly where this is going to take place. As of right now, it's uh, still uh, set to be uh, in the city. The defense's motion to change the trial location from Late Hawk County is in with the judge. Joining me to discuss, Siobhan Scott, psychotherapist and author. Obviously, the town where it happened, a lot of people feel like, look, this happened here. It should happen here. But the defense uh, put their own little survey out there, initially doing it without permission from the judge. Judge didn't like that, but then allowed it to proceed. And some of the results uh, are in. The defense team uh, surveyed potential jurors, jurors in Latah County. The findings, 98% of people in the county are aware of the case. 68% following it closely. And 67% believing that Koberger is already guilty. There are arguments saying that people are, are hearing misinformation and, and they're believing it, that Koberger is linked to other murders and victims and uh, was romantically rejected and, and all these, these different things. Okay, I mean, you can hear that, but you know, you're going to hear facts at some point too if you're a juror. Does it make sense to move this thing just to avoid appellate issues or should, should this thing take place where the crime took, took place? I think it's reasonable in this case to move it. You know, if you're looking at trying to get as as much of an unbiased jury as possible, certainly being in the county where, you know, the capital of Boise, you've got a potential 500,000 mm -hmm. um, population to pull from. So you're more apt to find people who do not already have a convict convicted sense that he's guilty sure and you know without the all the other narratives that they've bought into because it's in a small community they follow things so closely mm -hmm. you know and and there's not as much going on in that little area and so people spend a lot of time on this and are very invested in in the case you get over here where i'm at in oregon and in, in the portland area i i bet half the community would be aware of the name but they probably aren't following the case as they are there in in where it happened. Should they do the same survey in Boise just to see, I mean, you know, what, sure. what the, what the level is there? Cause I mean, I imagine it's probably statistically a bit less. I just don't know how yeah. much less. Yeah. I think you'd, you'd probably find that it's less and yeah, you're not going to go anywhere on the planet and, and not find an area where people haven't heard of the case mm -hmm. probably, but yeah, there would probably be more jurors to, to pull from. And that just makes, makes good sense to I me. Mean, I mean, ultimately, you do want an unbiased jury uh, as best as you can get. People, you know, there's going to be people who do want to get on this case, uh, and and they will say by whatever role they need to uh, to do that. Um, to me, in this case, though, is it really that difficult to decipher uh, fact from fiction or rumor from not rumor? I, I mean, I know this is what we do. We talk about these things all the time, so it's fairly clear cut. But you know. I don't know, there's a lot of things like there's one where was he connected to this murder in like 1999 or something? He would have been like four. So, I mean, just common sense and logic would tell you, no, he's not connected to that. Um, but there have been some some things that are rumors, but I think they 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 may be rumors, but I think they border on, you know, logistically possible things that could have happened. He could have easily gone to these restaurants that they were at. Some yeah. people say they did see him there. He may yeah. have been there. May have had nothing to do with the murder or stalking anybody, but you know that may have happened. Um, is it uh, is it that difficult for people to go? Oh, this is fact. This is fiction. Especially if they make it to the jury, and only what's going to be presented in that courtroom is is what you know is permitted because they're viewing it as is factual information. It's so hard to to try to find jurors who are not going to be unduly tainted with stories and and rumors and innuendo because they have an emotional let's say um stake mm -hmm. in believing the story or the rumor and i think that's the fear if you get people who are completely convinced that he's guilty and it's kind of hard to read a lot of the the evidence that we do know that's been exposed and not come to the conclusion that he's guilty i think mm -hmm. most of us would would lean in that direction probably yeah. um and what percentage of people can get beyond that emotional bias that's the hard part, mm -hmm. I think, is that, as you say, when people want to get on a journey, jury, they'll say, oh, yeah, I can be fair. But 
can they really be fair? And yeah. that's probably one of the problems with with the human system that we have. You sure. Know? Here's one for you. And I, I, I'm wondering, you know, on the emotional bias of this that we we're just talking about, um, there's there's very much a like a like a free care and read movement. There's very much a, a Koberger is innocent uh, movement as well online that people are, you know, they don't really have any evidence to point in their direction, but they like to get behind something. It's a it's a group. It's a tribe that they can belong to. And another big argument here is that this case has been so publicized that everyone's going to think he's guilty. That's not the case. There's a lot of people who think he's he's innocent, too. So couldn't that also be argued on the other end that you may have some holdouts on the other side, too, that you otherwise wouldn't have simply due to the publicity of this case? Yeah, that's a that's a really good point, too, that people come in with biases in both directions. And, you know, you just don't really know what you're going to get with the jury. And that's that's the yeah. problem. Yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, you, you want to avoid any sort of appellate issues. Um, I think it would be, I mean, if I was in that community, I certainly would want it in my community. But from a standpoint of let's not keep reliving this for the next 20 yeah. years, because there will be an appellate uh, a possibility. And they'll appeal it no matter what, if he's found guilty. Yeah. Uh, but if they can find some of those things like, oh, it wasn't fair. Guess what? Everybody gets to relive this drama and this trauma forever when these families exactly. are, are just trying to heal the best that they can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to listen to this podcast ad-free? Then hit subscribe to the True Crime Today Premium Plus channel now on Apple Podcasts. You'll instantly have access to all of our episodes labeled Advance Ad-Free. You'll hear the interviews before everyone else and with no interruption. No interruptions. Subscribe to the True Crime Today Premium Plus channel now on Apple Podcasts. And start binging now.